We've decided to film in, your, in this dressing room, yeah. mainly because the last time most people saw you in this dressing room, yeah. you knew it was coming. Yeah, but I don't um, have a feeling. <laughs> was that amazing celebration. Yeah. Um, what do you remember about the day and the moment? Well, I can, I'll never forget the day, and I want to forget the moment. <laughs> <laughs> The after-match celebrations, um, nobody will ever, you know, let me forget. Where the boys had, I think it was about 15 shots on target on the pitch. I think we had about 73 <laughs> shots on target in the boardroom. <laughs> and so that, that set me up really nicely, you know. And then I find, my God, I'm running out of time here. I need to get down to the most important people in my life, you know, because they are my extended family, the boys. You know, what's going on in the dressing room? Now, what I just missed by seconds was um, your colleagues turning around to the boys and saying, you can do whatever you want. You can take your clothes off. You can swing from the ceiling. You cannot use any expletives. I love these boys. Probably in the same position that you are, Tommy Elphix going live <laughs> you know, in front of me, but the damage had already been done. I didn't even know what would happen. You know, and then of course the boys, you know, tip me upside down and uh, Callum gives me a good spanking. <laughs> and I just thank Callum and I said, Callum, something I want to thank you for. I said, for 23 years I've been trying to convince my wife that that's normal. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, an amazing dream to get to the Premier League. Now you're in the Premier League, is it still a dream or is it very much, this is reality now? This is the reality, because everybody's still talking about Bournemouth and the incredible story, and you can get sucked into that. And I'm still guilty of when I go to grounds, you know, David Sullivan saying, what a privilege it is being here. And I'm using the word privilege all the time. And yet people are saying to me, it's not a privilege, it's a right. You know, you have, you're here by right because you were the best side in the championship last year. After 116 years, you know, of this football club, bar a few years being in the wilderness, suddenly, you know, we're rubbing shoulders with the literati, you know, of world football. You've got to actually pinch yourself sometimes to recognise you're there. You mentioned David Sullivan. He said he hated going to the Etihad. Yes. You went there on Saturday. Yeah. Not a great result for you, but you're a City fan, aren't you? No, I'm a Bournemouth fan. I'm an yeah. old City fan. An old City fan. <laughs> yeah. Is that difficult for you then? It was very difficult. Um, you know, interestingly enough, there was no difficulty in who I'm supporting. At the same time, I had immense pride to be chairman of a football club as a Mancunian, to go back, you know, to my boyhood side um, was unbelievable. But they should have had a guy sent off, shouldn't they? Um, <laughs> then the Otamendi? Well, it, you know, it, it, it's, uh, I've got, had enough controversy <laughs> with referees yeah, this year, so I have to be careful. You're that not I'm, saying anything. Yeah, that, um, you know, if you're happy to pay my fine, I'm happy to spend the next hour with you <laughs> slaughtering everybody in sight. I can't see what you're saying. City should have been down to 10 men yeah. and you'd have definitely won. Um, <laughs> Jeff, take us back to the beginning. Yeah. When you first decided to get involved with Bournemouth, um, why? I'm a fanatical football man. Um, I'd always wanted to be a footballer, um, obviously never, you know, never made it, um, but I'd always wanted to be involved in football and somehow I thought as a financial advisor I could turn the fortunes of this football club around. I was deluded um, and that's when I realised I must have left my head at home. You know, I, I just loved the place, I loved the club, I had a passion, I thought I could make a difference and the club was going, you know, it would have been liquidated you know, if we hadn't uh, uh, put the money in the club at that time. When you first moved in, when you first got that, can you believe from that moment when you realised quite what you'd taken on, that that, would, that side would ever be anywhere near the Premier League? No, it was just hand to mouth. We couldn't afford a first class stamp. It was just ridiculous. You know, remember at that time, we had a 10 point um, deduction the first year. We played Carlisle away the last game of the season, needing to win to stay up. It was the day of my daughter's wedding. So I'm at the wedding. Our local radio station had given me a single feed um, earpiece. <laughs> and I've got the earpiece in and I'm listening to the game, which we drew. The final whistle when Cheltenham had an amazing result uh, and it meant we were relegated. I'm the most emotional person God's ever put on this planet. I burst into tears 
everybody at the wedding thinks that I'm crying because I'm giving my daughter away. So are you I, walking up the aisle? I'm literally, literally giving my daughter away. I couldn't <laughs> give her away before that. And I am literally bursting into tears because the club's been relegated. Um, it was just a moment I'll never forget. And I had half of Kevin Bond's family there in tears as well. So they were crying because he was practically out of a job. <laughs> if I win the Euro Millions, should I buy Cambridge United? No, you should buy Bournemouth. Because if you've got that many millions, we'll take your money. <laughs> Jeff, thanks for your time.